love you all. Would you let me bear my soul to you for just a little bit today? Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. I walked in this church very early this morning, and man, I'm telling you, something got a hold of me. For several days, matter of fact, I, I've been knowing exactly what I was going to preach here for several days because the Lord laid some things on my heart. I hope you will let me finish today. If you get through before I do, I'll see you later. Because I plan on finishing today. The Bible said in Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and that, knowing the time, that now it is high time. Everybody say high time. It's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering or wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now I know that many of you could probably understand that scripture just like it is, but I just... I want to read from the Amplified Version today because I feel like it just gives so much clarity what I want to say today. So here it is in the Amplified very quickly today. Besides this, Paul said, you know what a critical hour this is. How it is high time now for you to wake up out of your sleep. Rouse to reality. For salvation, final deliverance is nearer to us now than when we first believed or adhered to, trusted in, and relied on Christ the Messiah. The night is far gone, and the day is almost here. Let us then drop, that means fling away, the works and the deeds of darkness and put on the full armor of light. Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably and becomingly as in the open light of day, not in reveling, that's carousing, and drunkenness, not in immorality and debauchery, that's sensuality and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, but clothe yourself. Somebody say that with me, clothe yourself. He said, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and make no provision for indulging the flesh, Put a, that may put a stop to thinking about evil cravings of your physical nature to gratify its desires or lust. You may be seated. I have preached from these scriptures in times gone by and, and uh, many times over the last 51 years of preaching. But let me just tell you that I feel like the Lord dropped them on me this week knowing where we would be on the first Sunday of 2023. Knowing the time is a very important thing, knowing the time. The word time, if you go study that, you will find it is written in the King James Version of the Scripture 619 times, that one word, time, is 619 times in the Scripture. And it's such a precious thing. It's a commodity. It's something that we value. Uh, matter of fact, sometimes you've told people, well, I don't have time for that. Or you might have said it this way, ain't nobody got time for that. But the facts are, time is precious to every one of us. Time is here, and then it's gone. It is no respecter of person. It does not matter who you are. Eventually, your skin will become wrinkled. Your hair will either turn gray or, gray or turn loose, and uh, you will you will be you will be affected by Father Time. Once it's gone, it's never retrieved. 
You can't go back yesterday or last week or last month or last year and retrieve time. Time is here and then it's fleeting and it's gone. It's, it's, it's a done away with. It was created by God when God made the sun, moon, and stars and he created the heavens and the earth and he divided all of these things and put the solar system in, in, into effect and, and, and everything to move around the sun. He created the day he called the night darkness and the day he called light. It was he who created and then and from that we get we get not just days and nights, but we get weeks, and then we get months, and then we get years, and then we get decades. We have seasons every year. Every time, every time you're about used to summer, here comes fall. And God never lets you get used to fall before here comes winter. And, and he's, he's constantly changing the season. Not only seasons, but dispensations. We are living actually in the sixth dispensation of time. So time is so important in our life. It's important to our daily lives. We live by the clock. Many of you have a watch on. Many of you have your cell phone. You've looked since I started preaching to see how long I'm going to be because time is important to you. Time is important to every one of us. We get up at a certain time. We go to bed at a certain time. We work at a certain time. And time is its one of the most important things of our life. That's why we must take time and make the very best of it. It's an era in which we exist it's a day in which we live. The time of the clock is important, but not nearly as important of what Paul was talking about in the 13th chapter of Romans because he said this, knowing the time, in other words, knowing the day that you're living in, understanding where you are in the prophecies of God, knowing what you are lining up to be and where you are in this present world. And that's why he said to the church, he said, knowing the time, that now it's, it's high time. It's the time to rouse out and get into the reality of this world. It's a critical hour. Do you agree with me today? I said it's a critical hour. It's not just another day. We've never seen days like these days. We've never encountered things that we've encountered in our world. Let me tell you something. I was, I was talking to somebody just this, this week about kids. You know, when we were kids, uh, trouble, getting in trouble was writing notes in class or throwing spitballs or, or, or maybe if you got real brave skipping a day of school. Uh, that, that was real bad stuff when I was growing up. But, but let me tell you now, it's drugs and alcohol, illicit sex. And I, I, I told my family this. I said, I'm going to use this preaching one day. So I'm about to use it today. Here's where we are. We used to teach our kids about the birds and the bees. But you can't teach your kids about the birds and the bees anymore. Well, you really not ought to because here's what we're dealing with. You got to talk about the birds and the birds and the bees and the bees and the birds that want to be bees and the birds that used to be bees and the bees that want to be birds and the bees that don't know they're birds are bees and they desire to be birds. We're dealing with a messed up crazy world. The time that we're living in is a, is a time of trouble and a time of sin and a time of debauchery and a time of evil and a time of wickedness. Somebody here has got to understand Understand the hour in which we're living because if you don't, you will never awake to the things that God wants you to see. You say, well, that's funny. No, that's not funny. That's real. That's where we really are. It's a shame when our kids are, are, are being taught that at five years old they can decide what gender they want to be. 
It's a shame what our world is filled and we're putting people in public offices and gloating over them because they're homosexuals or lesbians. It's a shame when we're, we're, we're gloating over that kind of lifestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come to realize the time. And Paul said, you better wake up because the day is at hand. You better understand that we are nearer than when we first believed. This old world is on a downhill slope and somebody's got to get a hold of the mindset that we know what time we're living in. Somebody needs to help me preach up in here today. I feel the Holy Ghost in what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did not just say knowing the time. He said it's high time. Somebody shout it's high time. You know what that means? It's a critical hour. It's important that you understand it. My dad, when he'd really mean something to me or say something to me, it really mean it. He'd say, son, it's high time you understand that. You know what that means? It's critical that you understand that. It's critical that you know this is happening. It's important that you understand where we are. We can shrug our shoulders and drop our head and turn and look the other way if we so desire. I hope you understand me. I don't mean to be mean on this Sunday morning. We may wind up on Fox News before it's over with, but I'm telling you I will never quit preaching against some things. I will never quit preaching against the evils of this world. I will never quit preaching against the wickedness of this world. I will never in 2023, I will turn the heat up on the devil. As a matter of fact, I know the time. The devil, he's got his watch on too. Don't you ever forget it. He knows his days are numbered and he knows the times that we are living in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are the days called the last days. This is the end of all things. We are they upon whom the ends of the world have come. I got to thinking about it this morning in prayer, weeping before God. I said, God, don't you let me lose one thing. You let me gain ground. Don't let me lose ground. I don't want to do anything that would cause me to be lost. I don't want to do anything that would cause you to be lost. Ladies and gentlemen, this is more important today than it's ever been in the history of mankind. We are the, I, 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 you, you can do the math if you want to, but I don't know how long a generation really is but here's what I know. When that, when that fig tree budded and the Bible talked about when the budding of the fig tree comes, that was when nation of Israel was born and that was 1948. That is, if I got my, if I've got all of my figures right, 75 years ago. But here's what Jesus said. This generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. So I'm asking you, what time is it? Do you know what time it is? It's 2023. That's a place, a place in time. That's what we've designated as a place in time. We woke up this morning to a brand new year. That's a joy. I'm like Minnie Pearl, I'm just proud to be here. Aren't you? Are you glad God gave you another year? You're glad God gave you another few days. Hallelujah. I told somebody out in the foyer this morning, I said, after all, I think it was Jay I was talking to. I said, you know, after all, no, it was Brother, Brother Hodge. I said, Jesus was supposed to come in 1988. I remember a guy said, there's 88 reasons why he should have. That's been a long time ago. He still hadn't come, but here's what I will tell you. He's still coming. And this day is, is far spent. And the night is almost over. And the morning is coming quickly. And if you don't believe that, you hadn't been reading the paper or watching the news are keeping up with where our world is. I looked at my wife this week. There was a picture on the TV of, 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 of Mr. Z and Mr. Putin and they were meeting and they used these words, a new world order. I said, baby, do you understand what that means? That means that Bible prophecy is coming to pass and the nations of this world are leaking up to come against Israel and the Antichrist is about to be 
revealed. And we are they who is going to see it all come to pass. You hear this pastor on this Sunday morning. You better get a grip on what time it is. The night is far gone and the day is almost here. And so we need to fling away the works and the deeds of darkness and put on, you know what? Let me tell you something. I, y- y'all don't, oh man, I got, a, I got at least eight minutes plus. Let me tell you something. If you think God's going to overlook sin, you're bad wrong. And if you think it's any less today than it was 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ago, you're still bad wrong. Because the sin is a transgression against the law of God. And there's some folks that want to get away with everything they can get away with. I'm not in it to get away with everything I can get away with. I'm in it to put everything I can put in it. I'm in it to be saved in the final analysis of it all. If you're just wanting to slide one foot in and keep the other foot out here in the world, you need a good old baptism of Holy Ghost fire this morning. You need to come to an altar and repent and say, God, in 2023, I understand where we are. My kids have got to be saved. My family's got to be saved. My 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 loved ones, my friends have got to be saved. Everything I'm going to do this year is because I know what time it is. Hallelujah. Here's what Paul said. Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably and becomingly as in the open, open light of day. Not in reveling, that's carousing and drunkenness and not in immorality and debauchery. Sensuality and licentiousness, not in quarreling and in jealousy. You know what he's saying? There's some things that you need to get out of your life because the time is short. Oh, it's not popular preaching, but it's truth. So here's what he said you better do. You better clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. You better put Jesus on you and in you and through you. And he said, make no provision for the indulging of the flesh. Put put a stop to thinking about evil cravings of your physical nature to gratify your desires of lust. I didn't come here to preach a pretty sermon today. I came here to tell you. 2023 is here. We made it. I don't know if we'll ever see another new year. I don't know if we'll ever see it. I got it. I don't know if we'll ever see another new year. But here's what I know. If the Lord tarries, I don't want to be a a preacher of, of negative things. But here's what I want to tell you. It ain't going to get no better. It's going to get worse because we are living in the era of the last days. I could go through the scriptures today and tell you all the things the Bible said about the last days, perilous times. Everybody say perilous times. That's dangerous times. You better get your kids. You better get your wife and your husband. You better head to an altar in a prayer room because it's dangerous times. We ain't got time for playing church. We ain't got time to go through the motions. We gotta, we gotta get down to business with God because we understand the times that we live in. You see, the very fact. The very fact that many, many people didn't show up on a Sunday morning to to start the year, I'm not mad at them. I hope God's not. But here's what I will tell you. Many people didn't show up today because they don't understand the times. We need everything we can get in the church. We need every move of God we can get in the church. 
We need every prayer that we can get in the church. We need to get as close to Calvary as we possibly can. We need to let blood spill over our soul every day. Let me tell you, folks, I'm preaching to you right now. You better get a vision. Forget about your wristwatch. You better get a vision of the clock that God's got because let me tell you, it's about to strike that final hour and we are about to see the coming of the Lord and we don't have time to play games. We just don't have time for that. I know and understand the time. Every head bowed in this room today. So much more that I could preach. The devil has slipped some things in on us. I was talking to my friend this morning early on the phone. He said, what you preaching? I told him what I was preaching. He said, here's what I'm preaching. I'm going back to the basics. He said, when, when a football team is not doing well, the coach knows what to do if he's a good coach. He don't try to put in more trick plays. He don't try to fool the enemy and the opponent. He says, boys, we got to go back to the basics. We got to go back to how to tackle. We got to go back to how to block. We got to go back to the basics. Somebody say that with me back to the basics. You know what to the basics are? Let me tell you, there's no blue light special on revival. I've been preaching a long time and I've never seen revival come because somebody could sing good. I've never seen revival come because somebody could play an instrument good. I've never seen revival come because you had a good usher staff. I've never seen revival come because you had a party in the fellowship hall. The only revival I've ever seen come was when people gathered around an altar to pray and people started pushing a plate back and the Holy Ghost started falling because people were paying the price. You know what time it is? It's time to pray. It's time to fast. It's time to seek the face of God. It's time to go back to the basics. It's time to understand the day and hour in which we're living. Pastor, do you think it really all takes all that? You know what? I don't think it does. I know it does. I don't think it does. I know it does. Did you hear me? This is not something that we're just beating the air with today. I know what we need to do. And I told God in this church this morning, all by myself, I said, Lord, if you'll give me grace, I'm going to lead them to the altars of repentance and we're going to get some things back to where they need to be because God we got some people that haven't understood the time and they need to know where we are and when they understand where we are they're going to fall on, uh, on, their, on their knees to pray and fall at the foot of the cross and be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ all over this building would you stand I could preach a long time here today You say, that's not a great way to start the new year, Pastor. That's very depressing. No, that's very real. That's why he said you got to, it's high time for you to wake up out of your sleep and rouse, the Amplified said, rouse to reality. You just think you're going to wind up here next Sunday morning or Wednesday night if we're lucky. You think that because we rounded the corner into January 1st, 2023, that, oh, there'll be another one. I don't know about that. I'm not trying to scare you, but I know the time, and I know what time it is on God's time clock. And if this Bible's true, and I believe that it is, then we're not far from the end of it all, Brother Eric. We're very near the coming of Jesus Christ. I wonder who would join me on a Sunday morning, the first day of the year, around the altars to repent and say, God, would you reveal to me in my own personal life what time it is in my life? I wonder who would help me find Jesus here today. I wonder who would find your place in prayer and say, God, I want to know what time it is in my own personal life. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus.